Secrets of the Mesozoic Era, Jurassic Period 199 million years ago, the Triassic period ends. The Jurassic period begins. The active collapse of the supercontinent Pangaea continues. After the mass extinction, nature began to gradually recover. After the giant continent split, animals could no longer move freely across the planet. Abundant rain began to soak up the moisture of the ancient Triassic deserts, and the world became greener again, with more lush vegetation. As Pangaea began to split, new seas and straits emerged, harboring new types of animals and algae. Sponges and bryozoans, sea stars and sea lilies. The five-armed sea lilies became common in the Jurassic. Giant coral reefs formed, harboring numerous ammonites. The ancestors of octopuses and squids, the belemnites, appeared. The Jurassic seas were home to many different species of fish. These included rays and sharks, as well as bony, cartilaginous, and ganoids. Radiant fish occupied a dominant niche in the Jurassic period. The largest rayfin fish of that time was Lidsichthys. The creature reached 16 meters in length and fed on plankton, like modern whales and whale sharks. In the Jurassic, the first herring fish appeared. Cartilaginous fishes continue in decline, apparently because ichthyosaurs and zooropterygii successfully compete with sharks. During this period, one of the oldest shark-like fish, the helicoprion, which had been known since the Carboniferous period, dies out. In the Jurassic period, there were fewer ammonites than in the Triassic. Belemnites were close relatives of modern cuttlefish and squid. These sea creatures had a cigar-shaped inner skeleton. Belemnites, like modern octopuses and squids, produced an inky fluid and used it to create a smokescreen when trying to escape predators. In the Jurassic seas, bivalves, especially those belonging to the oyster family, also developed significantly. Among the Jurassic gastropod mollusks, there are two genera that have survived unchanged to the present day. These are the pondworms and the coelacanth. Sea urchins gradually evolved from an oblong shape to a round shape. On land, in lakes and rivers, there were many different species of crocodiles, widely dispersed over the globe. There were also saltwater crocodiles with long snouts and sharp teeth for catching fish. Some varieties of crocodiles even grew flippers instead of legs to make it easier to swim. Tail fins allowed crocodiles to develop greater speed in the water than on land. New genera of fossil turtles appeared, and modern turtles appeared at the end of the Jurassic period. A huge number of species of plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs appeared, in serious competition with the new, fast-moving sharks and extremely agile bony fish. Fresh water bodies were home to a large number of amphibians. These are almost modern salamanders, frogs, and worms. Many crustaceans appeared. These are the bipeds, ten-legged, leaf-feeding crayfish, and freshwater sponges. The first ichthyosaurs are known to have appeared as early as the Triassic period. In the Jurassic, these reptiles adapted perfectly to life. Although ichthyosaurs were thought to be reptiles, the fossil record suggests that they were viviparous, producing offspring as mammals do. It is possible that the offspring of ichthyosaurs were born on the open sea, like whales. Plesiosaurs were also a large group of predators that lived in the Jurassic seas. Plesiosaurs had a thick torso with four leaf-shaped limbs, a long serpentine neck with a small head. The marine predators hunted for schools of small fish with their flexible necks. Another group of short-necked predatory reptiles. These are the pliosaurs. Pliosaurs spent their lives in great depths. Some large pliosaurs also preyed on smaller plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs. 
the Jurassic seas were relatively shallow. Therefore, the remains of animals that were carried by sea currents or waves were well preserved in such places. The great vegetation of the Jurassic period contributed to the widespread distribution of reptiles. The very first dinosaurs appeared over 200 million years ago. Over the course of 140 million years, these popular creatures evolved into many different species. Dinosaurs spread to all continents and adapted to live in a wide variety of habitats. Some dinosaurs were no larger than a squirrel. Others weighed more than 15 adult elephants combined. Some were heavy on four legs. Others ran faster on two legs than Olympic sprint champions. Dinosaurs gave rise to the science of paleontology. So, most of the dinosaurs of the Jurassic period belonged to the order Zorischia. But there was also the genus Avianetosaurus dinosaurs, or the order Ornithischia. The suborders were divided into suborders, among which the most famous ones stood out. Sauropodomorphs. The suborders were divided into infraspecies. The most popular infraorder is the sauropods. Sauropods moved on four legs and had five toes on each foot. Their main food was plant food. Sauropods had a long neck, a small head, and a long tail. At the moment, there is a serious debate among experts in paleontology as to whether dinosaurs could have had two brains. Some argue that such creatures as Stegosaurus had a second brain. Others vehemently refute this theory. These long-necked beasts roamed the Jurassic savannas and ate up all the vegetation they could reach. After a herd of sauropods had passed, the dense forest turned into a lifeless wasteland. Some species of sauropods lived in herds, with the adults taking care of children and juveniles. For other sauropod species, children were raised separately from their parents and the herd was joined by older individuals. In the Jurassic Park movie series, sauropods are shown chewing on leaves and branches. In fact, sauropods bit off and immediately swallowed vegetation. The food went into their stomachs and was grinded there already with the help of rocks, which the animals swallowed in advance. The most numerous family of Jurassic sauropods Diplodox and numerous varieties. The largest sauropod is considered to be Amphicelius. The weight of this animal reached up to 150 tons and its length was up to 50 meters. Most individuals in the family of Diplodocus did not exceed 25 meters and weighed no more than 40 tons. The family of Diplodocus included such animals as Superzorus, Apodosaurus, and of course Diplodocus himself. Diplodocus appeared before many sauropods and is the oldest dinosaur. This herbivore reached up to 28 meters in length. A supersaurus of the same family spent most of its life grazing in swamps and lakes, where it was safe from predators. Apodosaurus or Brontosaurus was quite tall, had a large hump on its back and a very thick tail. Like all Diplodox Apodosaurus preferred to live in swampy areas. From the Diplodocus family came another family called the Dicreosaurs. These were small animals compared to the Diplodocus. No more than 10 meters long and weighing no more than 4 tons. This is the family Macronarius. The most diverse family after the Diplodocus. These sauropods didn't differ much from the Diplodocus sauropods. These animals made louder noises than Diplodocuses because of the large leathery sacs under their noses. The most popular species among the Macronarians were Brachiosaurs. Brachiosaurs could reach leaves from taller trees. Diplodocuses could not do this. Although all Macronarians were small, Brachiosaurus was a true giant. The average animal was up to 27 meters long and weighed up to 50 tons. Brachiosaurus needed a daily diet of 500 kilograms of green matter. The smallest Jurassic sauropods were considered Anchisaurus. 
up to 4 meters long and only up to 30 kilograms in weight. Which sauropod had the longest neck? Mammonsosaurus. With a total body length of 25 meters, the herbivore had a neck length of 15 meters. There were also primitive sauropods in the Jurassic period. These were the Volcanodonts, the ancestors of the Diplodocus and Macronarius. The bones of these dinosaurs were not hollow, as in advanced sauropods, but almost solid. Their necks were short. And the body was not adapted for total vegetation eating. Volcanodonts could eat grass and eat trees, but in much smaller quantities than the descendants. These could weigh up to 48 tons and be up to 18 meters long. Another ancestor of sauropods that lived in the early Jurassic period, Shunosaurus. This animal differed from the other prosauropods in that it had a mace on its tail. This weapon was used by Shunosaurus to defend itself against enemies. In the middle of the Jurassic period, the prosauropods could not compete with evolution and died out quietly. And of course, in the Jurassic period, the suborder theropods flourished. Theropods represented all the predatory dinosaurs on our planet. Predators moved on two hind legs, which were almost indistinguishable from those of birds. Many theropods incubated their eggs like birds. Some theropods had feathers. For a long time, birds were thought to have evolved from theropods. Now, most paleontologists agree that birds were separated from the main lineage of archosaurs in the Triassic and that the resemblance of theropods to birds is simply a parallel evolutionary joke. The forelimbs of theropods look similar to those of humans, but the bone and muscle structure of theropods was quite different, and their arms were much less mobile than ours. Theropods could not rotate the hand, turning it up or down with the palm of their hand. And some carnivores had fingers that didn't bend at all. So, which theropods lived in the Jurassic? A group called the Coelophysoids. These nimble carnivores were up to 1. 5 meters long and weighed up to 300 kilograms. Smaller cephasoids were not true carnivores, but ate insects and carrion. Larger species preyed on sauropods and prosauropods when these animals were small. The largest coelophysoid was thought to be Dilophosaurus. There is much debate among paleontologists about what Dilophosaurus looked like. Did this animal have a hood and did it spit venom? The big question. Another lineage of theropods was represented by ceratosaurs. Scientists very often enlisted new and unknown species of dinosaurs to the ceratosaurus and therefore this suborder became very numerous. It included animals from 1 meter to 12 meters in length. And the weight could range from a few kilograms to one ton. Some of the ceratosaurs moved on to a plant-eating lifestyle. Then theropods were divided into perfect and imperfect predators. The perfect carnivores came to be called Thetanuri. The most ancient representatives of Thetaners were Cryolophosaurus and Pivotosaurus. Cryolophosaurus is interesting because it lived in Antarctica and calmly endured winter frosts. The next family of Jurassic theropods was the Megalosauridae or giant lizards. Megalosaurids are large predators up to 12 meters long and up to 5 tons in weight. These beasts preyed on young individuals of large sauropods and also ate the bodies of older individuals who had died their own deaths. The largest predator of this family was Torvosaurus. Torvosaurus had huge, sharp teeth like the teeth of a saw. The predator used these teeth to tear the flesh of its victims. Megalosaurids populated all areas of the globe. Paleontologists have found remains in North America, Europe, and Africa. At the very beginning of their evolution, individuals of this family were fragile and small. But the later megalosaurids were real giant monsters. Muscular forelimbs aided in the hunting of large herbivorous dinosaurs. Their sharp claws undoubtedly left terrible lacerations in the side of their prey. The powerful neck of the predator allowed it to plunge its dagger-like fangs deep into the body of its prey with terrible force and tear out huge chunks of still warm meat. Another infraspecies of theropods that deserves attention. 
These are the carnosaurs. Jurassic carnosaurs were up to 12 meters in size and weighed up to 5 tons. The most famous of the carnosaurs was Allosaurus. Despite its large size, Allosaurus was very agile. On a short distance predators developed speed up to 55 km per hour, and strong and dexterous arms of Allosaurus allowed to grasp small vertebrate prey confidently. Many paleontologists believe that Allosaurus gathered in packs and attacked herds of sauropods, selecting relatively small individuals. There is also a theory that adult Allosaurus took care of their offspring, in particular, they gave some of the meat they caught to children. By the way, Allosaurus was not the biggest Carnosaurus. The largest Carnosaur was Epinterias. This theropod reached about 12 meters in length, which made this animal larger than an Allosaurus. Epinterias, like Allosaurus, could probably use its jaw as an axe, striking its prey. All other theropods are related to the Zellurosaurus. Many of the raptors had feathers similar to those of modern birds. For a long time, birds were thought to be the descendants of the Velociraptors. Proceratosaurus is considered to be the common ancestor of all the Zellurosaurus species. The suborder Zellurosaurus consists of three infrorders. These are the four-meter-long dinosaurs Saluridae. The second infrorder is the Compsognathidae. Small theropods weighing up to three kilograms. The diet of these small carnivores consisted of rodents and insects. And the third infrorder consisted of Tyrannosaurids. Jurassic Tyrannosaurids were the ancestors of the famous Tyrannosaurus. The raptors were no more than 4 meters long and had primitive downy plumage. All further theropods bear the common name of Maniraptor. They were originally thought to be the direct ancestors of birds. But it turned out that Maniraptors had nothing to do with birds. This is what one of the suborder Maniraptor looks like. Epidexipteryx. These creatures were at first no more than 2 meters in length and then began to shrink. These small carnivores were mostly arboreal. The famous Stegosaurus. A small armored herbivorous dinosaur. This animal belonged to the suborder Thyreophores. Stegosaurus ranged in size from 4 to 12 meters. Weights ranged from 150 kilograms to 4.5 tons. Huge ridges on their backs and dangerous spikes on their tails were necessary weapons against predators. Stegosaurus grazed in herds, the, the adults taking care of the children. There was also a second infraspecies in the suborder Tyrarophores. These are the Ankylosaurs. These animals relied on a more powerful passive defense. Ankylosaurs' bodies were covered with bony plates. Ankylosaurs were just forming in the Jurassic period. Jurassic herbivore shells were not yet very strong. Jurassic ankylosaurs were up to 4 meters long and weighed 1 ton. And this is a suborder of the bird-eating dinosaurs. Seropods. The main infrorder seropods were the ornithopods. These plant-eating dinosaurs lived in forests and did not defend themselves from predators but ran away from them. Jurassic ornithopods were up to 8 meters long and weighed up to 700 kilograms. At the end of the Jurassic period, the ornithopods were separated from the marginocephalus, which began to grow horns on their heads. In the suborder of avian dinosaurs, the family of heterodontosaurs stands apart. These were the only dinosaurs which had incisors, canines and molar teeth almost like those of mammals. Heterodontosaurs occupied the ecological niche of modern pigs in the Jurassic period. The animals dug roots out of the ground with their front limbs, chewed cones and nuts with their advanced teeth, did not disdain insects, and on occasion caught and ate small animals. Also, in the Jurassic period, there were separate species of avian dinosaurs, which did not fit into any of the large groups. Many small predators with beak-like jaws appeared. These are the scaly lepidosaurs. Today modern Africa is inhabited by herd animals such as gazelles, buffalo, and zebras. Huge herds of many thousands migrate from one part of Africa to another. In the Jurassic period, something similar was born. 
Thousands of Gadrosaurs huddled in herds, traveling across the ancient lands of our planet. Gadrosaurs nibbled on stunted vegetation with their horny beaks, then chewed it up with their strong molars. After the Triassic-Jurassic extinction, the only supergroup of Kruritars survived. These were the Crocodilomorphs. At the very beginning of the Jurassic period, Sphenozoans dominated. These animals reached only up to one and a half meters in length. Other crocodilomorphs were even smaller, protozoa. It was up to one meter long and weighed no more than 40 kilograms. Over time, the group evolved and divided into several new groups. The more advanced group was Talatazucus. These were saltwater crocodiles that had their paws turned into fins. Talatazucids are divided roughly in half into two families. They are the Metrorhynchidae and the Teleosaurus. Metrorhynchids reached a length of 6 meters and lived in the open sea. These marine predators developed a tail fin and learned to drink seawater. Like sea turtles, Metrorhynchids only came ashore to lay their eggs. Teleosaurs could grow up to 9 meters and lived off the coast. In appearance and behavior, these creatures were virtually indistinguishable from contemporary crocodiles. The ancestors of modern crocodiles belonged to the Neozoochus group. They were goniophilididae, which could reach up to 4 meters in length and looked almost like modern crocodiles. And the small rat-like land-dwelling Adipasauridae. Insect evolution accelerated dramatically in the Jurassic. Ancient nature was filled with the endless buzzing and crackling of many new species of insects, crawling and flying everywhere. Among them were the ancestors of today's ants, bees, earwigs, flies, and wasps. Many different dragonflies, beetles, cicadas, bedbugs, and spiders appeared. Later, in the Cretaceous period, there was a new evolutionary explosion when insects began to make contacts with the newly emerging flowering plants. In the Jurassic, thousands of pterosaurs took to the air. These were the first and largest flying vertebrates of the archosaurs. The evolution of these animals took off in the Jurassic period. The most famous pterosaurs of the early Mesozoic were Pterodactyl and Rampharynchus. Rampharynchus had long tails, long narrow wings, and a large skull with numerous teeth. Rampharynchus could take off from the ground. The masters of the sky settled on the banks of rivers, lakes, and seas. The wingspan of the Rampharynchus could reach two and a half meters. The nestlings of Rampharynchus could fly and feed on their own right after hatching from the egg. Among the Rampharynchidae, the family Aneuronathidae stood out. They were small insect-eating Rampharynchus the size of a sparrow. In the mid-Jurassic period, the pterodactyls evolved from the Aneurognidids. These pterosaurs had more efficient wings and did not need a tail to maneuver in the air. Pterodactyls were no different in size and lifestyle from the Rampharynchids. Many pterodactyls had a long ossified ridge on their heads for improved aerodynamics. Flying creatures fed on fish, sometimes sea lilies, mollusks, and insects. Pterodactyls had to jump off cliffs or trees to take off. The first birds also appeared in the Jurassic. The ancestors of the first birds were the ancient reptile Pseudozuchii, which lived in the Triassic period and which also gave rise to dinosaurs and crocodiles. Three genera of Jurassic bird-like creatures are known. Archaeopteryx is more of a maniraptor than a bird. And Longipteryx is almost certainly a bird. Something like the modern kingfisher. But birds were still very rare in the Jurassic period. Another genus of animals that began to flourish in the Jurassic period. Lepidosauromorphs. The ancestors of lizards and snakes. Most of the Jurassic Lepidosauromorphs belong to the Zavropterygidae. They are marine reptiles with a lifestyle similar to that of today's seals. The largest suborder of Jurassic Zavropterygii is Pliosaurs. They are large and very large predators with short necks, elongated heads and large jaws. Pliosaurs could reach a length of up to 20 meters. Pliosaurs had an interesting feature. 
It was a special design of the nostrils, which served not for breathing, but solely for sniffing water. Plesiosaurs differed from pliosaurs in having a small head on a long neck. Plesiosaurs were also predators, but they ate smaller prey. Jurassic plesiosaurs ranged in length from 5 to 8 meters. There were few lizards in the Jurassic. More than half were beaked-headed lizards, a type of modern-day Gateria. Some of the lizards lived in freshwater reservoirs. The Jurassic synapsids consisted of primitive animals, similar to modern platypuses and echidnas. The only known exception is the recently discovered beaver tail otter. This animal reached a length of 42 centimeters. Also interesting is the frutifosser, the first anteater the size of a chipmunk in the history of the Earth. Among mammals, carnivores appeared. Some of these animals adapted to life in trees. Around this time, some 160 million years ago, the first placental mammals also appeared, like Juramea sinensis, the progenitor of all placental mammals. Thank you for watching this episode to the end. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also click on the bell not to miss new and interesting releases from the channel Real Unreal.